Hello and welcome to my channel, I went to lose gaming. So the last time we did one of these tier lists was way back in patch 2.2. It's been over 5 months since then and Kono and I are back to make an updated 2.6 tier list. First of all, I collaborate with Kono on these tier lists, so be sure to check out her Twitch at twitch.tv slash Kono. And a quick recap, this is where we left off in patch 2.2. Remember this is a tier list, and frankly most tier lists that are created by individuals like myself and Kono are completely subjective, and that means that it's our opinion. So if you disagree with something, that's great, be sure to let us know down in the comments below because we do enjoy seeing different perspectives. We're starting off with a free to play to low spender tier list, and and then I'll be wrapping up this video with a whale tier list at the end. The free to play to low spender tier list assumes you mostly have Constellation 0, maybe Constellation 1 or 2 for your 5 star characters. And for 4 star characters we generally assume they have constellations because you'll probably get them eventually as you keep playing the game. And a quick update on my discord over at discord.gg slash IWTL. We're going to be hosting a huge event soon to be announced. There's going to be tons of prizes like Crunchyroll subscriptions, Hulu, Amazon, just for reacting and voting for the winners. And then there's going to be Discord Nitro for event participant winners. We also host weekly giveaways. So stay tuned for more details and pay attention to the announcements channel over at discord.gg slash IWTL. And without further ado, let's hop into when Kono and I were working on this tier list together. Yep, and that's where we left off. Since then, there have been quite a few patches, quite a few characters released. And we have also decided to adjust the tier list in terms of kind of the way that we've divided the tier list to make it a bit more clear and a bit more um, less redundant. And the first thing we're gonna do is we're actually gonna merge B and C tier because, you know, once you're kind of at the bottom of the barrel, you're just at the bottom of the barrel. So we're just gonna move these C tier characters into the B tier. Wait, put that Jin Yan back. Oh wait, no, oh, never mind. Oh, no, no, hey, we, we haven't gotten to uh, <clears throat> adjustments to the tier yet. And uh, Xin Yan uh, <laughs> potentially getting a huge adjustment. Is it in a good way or a bad way? I guess you guys, you guys will have to see. And Wait, are you recording right now? Oh yeah, yeah, I'm recording. Oh shit! <laughs> we caught Kono by surprise. So here, Kono, oh, why, why don't you explain the new tier called the special tier? All right, all right. I so basically the special tier is a tier that has uh, characters that rank from A to S tier or S S tier, depending on their situation. But because they're so specialized. You might as well not throw them to with other units because their niches are just... They're so unique in their own right that it's hard to rate them fairly in a tier list. And the first character we're going to move there is one of the existing characters and we are demoting or promoting Sarah, Sarah to the special tier. She is an Electra buffer and primarily just a Constellation 6. Once she hits Constellation 6 though, she is one of the best Electro buffers in the game, in particular for one of the best characters in the game, Raiden. And she's also, you know, a solid Electro buffer for other Electro uh, damage characters like Fischl, Beto, etc. Uh, yeah, and the reason the reason why you might not want to run her before C6, uh, do keep this in mind, is because the opportunity cost of her buff is it generally ends up not being worth it. So do keep that, keep that in mind before you uh, build up your Sarah because you saw this tier list and you're like, oh, Sarah must be good. Right. No. Because she's she's situationally like SS tier. That's the current uh, housekeeping for the tier list from the previous time we made the tier list. Uh, I guess we kind of skipped a step, but that's okay. We, we can go a little bit out of order. Um, this is Kono. Uh, Kono, why don't you introduce yourself? Hey, uh, I'm Kono. Uh, I stream on Twitch and I do like challenge runs, et cetera, et cetera. I used to do a lot of account reviews and fix up people's accounts and stuff. I don't really do that as much anymore. I do a lot of like free-to-play related content. And uh, yeah, hope you guys are having a wonderful day. Be sure to go check her out. A very entertaining content creator if I do say so myself. Hey, editing I went to lose here. I realized while editing that Kono and I didn't provide a summary of the tiers themselves. 
So here's a quick recap of the tiers. SS tier consists of meta-defining characters. These are the best characters in the game. The creme brulee, the cream of the crop. They can carry your account and either do something exceptionally well or are so ubiquitous that they're almost impossible to replace. It's highly recommend to build at least some of these characters if you have them for your account. Next is the S tier, which consists of great characters. Sometimes these characters can be just as good or even occasionally better than SS tier characters. It's hard to go wrong with investing into these characters, but they are often either considered a little bit more niche compared to many of the SS tier characters or just a little bit weaker in some regard. Then we have the next tier, which is the A tier, whose residents I would describe as good and balanced. A tier characters can still healthily clear the hardest content in the game, but there is a noticeable gap in either raw power or utility when compared to characters in the SS tier. And then we have the B tier. As we mentioned earlier, we merged the B and C tier. This tier is one where I would describe as not recommended to invest a lot of your resources into, unless, you know, obviously you just like those characters. While these characters, of course, can still clear the hardest content in the game, they are often really niche or require a lot more support. And that support usually comes from SS tier characters in order to succeed. So the first unit that we've decided to move is, believe it or not, Kazaha, and we've decided to move him to the number one spot. So some of you guys may be wondering better than Bennett. The reason for this is because a lot of uh, characters we're starting to see don't actually scale that well off of attack. I think, you know, just usage rates, everything about him, he's been you know, one of the best characters for such a long time. And like Kono said, you know, Bennett, great for attack buffing stuff, but Kazuha, literally great for any cryo, electro, hydro, and, uh, wait, pyro? Am I missing pyro? Yeah, pyro, pyro character, or uh, literally the best character support that you can have for any of those characters. And those characters obviously make up the vast majority of the characters in this game. So Kazuha being even more universal than Bennett, as well as offering, you know, the, the crazy um, crowd control that he offers, which in many scenarios is even better than Menti's, is, I think, hands down, the best character in the game right now. He also doesn't have the bad matchups that Menti does. Okay, so we're done with any adjustments. Oh wait, we have one more adjustment in the SS tier, and we have decided to scoot Aika up a single spot right above Ganyu. Now, not a big change, but just kind of a small change to reflect the recent um, player preference, usage rates, as well as, in our opinion, just how well Ayaka performs and kind of the burst damage favorability for most content where you want to nuke stuff down as quick as possible. Wait, there's one more thing. This huh? doesn't matter as much, but Ayaka's application for Cryo is easier, making it better for stuff like Hyco Heralds. So the S tier, um, now we're going to talk about adjustments we're making to the S tier. The first unit that we're going to be moving to the S tier is or not moving to the S tier, but moving up in the S tier is Sucras, and we're going to be moving her up above Eula. Up above Eula is because the utility that you get from Sucras's EM sharing, plus the fact that she's one of the few anima units who also double function as a buffer, rates her better. Like, she has, she has a lot of comps where she's really, really good. Uh, one, of the, one of the primary examples is like the Sekokomon, uh, or Pokemon Trainer Sucros, as some people might know it as, which is one of the better free-to-play comps in the game. Um, we keep getting new DPS characters, but we don't keep getting new Animo support characters, and, you know, Sucros being one of the few good Animo support characters outside of Kazuha and Venti is an invaluable asset, assuming you don't have both Kazuha and Venti uh, for your account, so yeah. Uh, she she deserves a small promotion. Even even with Kazuha Venti, there are some scenarios where Sucrose is better. This next one is a big shift. You know, some some people might get upset over this, even though I think it's uh, something to celebrate. But we have decided to move Kokomi up from the depths of the A tier all the way up to S tier, also above Eula and right under Sucrose. You know, Kokomi's just proven to be such an incredibly reliable unit and a healer and everything. And as people have just kind of finally properly built her and learned to use her, uh, they realize that her damage, A, is not negligible, and B, the utility she provides is unparalleled. And Kokomi also fills in the slot as the Hydro Applicator for one of the best teams in the game, which is the Ayaka Freeze team. 
She provides tons of roll consolidation as well as a lot of attack buffs through the tenacity of the Millilith as well as the uh, Thrilling Tales of Dragon Slayer. So very cheap, very easy to build and pretty much makes the on-field character invincible as long as you don't basically get one-shot by something. An interesting thing to note that while she falls off pretty hard at whale levels for anything besides freeze, for free-to-play teams, her her damage ceiling being as high as, or not damage ceiling, but damage floor, being as high as it is means that it's really easy to get a lot of damage in her comps through, through the use of stuff like uh, Kokomi Taser or Sokokomon ends up doing on par, if not outperforming some of the better free-to-play teams. The next major promotion up to the S tier is a, actually is a huge change for her. It is Noel, all the way up from the B tier to the bottom of S tier. Now we are assuming that this Noel is a Constellation 6. To clarify, if Noel is not a Constellation 6, she belongs somewhere back in the B tier, but let's we're talking about Constellation 6 Noel because a lot of free-to-play players do have Constellation 6 Noel by now. Noel was basically, I think, quadruple buffed. She got the Husk of Opulent Dream artifact set, which is perfect for her. She got Goro's release, who is an incredible Geo support character for her. She has the opportunity to get the Red Hornstone Thresher, one of the best weapons for at least specifically defense scaling Geo Claymore characters. And finally, she also uh, had buffs to one of her bigger, biggest uh, teammates, Albedo. Albedo got some major buffs as well, which we will um, talk about soon enough. Uh, actually, we, we skipped Albedo, but we'll go back to talk to him after uh, we finish talking about Noel. I just realized that. Uh, Kono is probably staring at this uh, list here, realizing, oh, I went to lose to skip that. And, uh... Yeah, I was. <laughs> I was. It's like, why don't we go over Coco first? <laughs> yeah, I figured that much. But don't worry, we'll, we'll talk about Al Albedo next. But yeah, so um, Noel got quadruple buffs, and it really shows. I mean, her personal damage, I just have to say it, is about Xiao's level, right? And she provides the amount, you know, so much more utility, like healing, shielding, as well as the ability to be swapped off field. And Kono's even had experience outside of, you know, uh, just heavy Geo teams, like I I'm talking mostly a Geo Noel team, which is Noel, Goro, plus Albedo, or you don't even need Albedo, maybe Zhongli instead. So, Noel used to be a pretty bad unit back before all the buffs. It wasn't the worth the opportunity that you would just get from running another unit, but because of all the buffs buffing her, and we're, t we're talking about like a, a 50 to 60% damage bonus and not being a selfish DPS because you can swap her off anytime, right? Which makes your team rotations a lot better and smoother overall to play and makes funneling way easier. E even at free-to-play levels, you could so easily be getting like 40,000 Noel slashes and like a Noel hyper carry scenario. Yeah. Albedo is also getting a big promotion thanks to all the buffs that we've had or that, you know, he's had. And in particular, uh, we decided to move Albedo up to the S tier, right under Xiao. And the reason for this is very similar. Albedo got the Husk of Opulent Dreams, he also got Goro as a potential teammate. And finally he got a custom 4 star, completely free to play weapon, the Cinnabar Spindle. Which is custom made just for Albedo. And with all these buffs, it's really not uncommon to see him do 30,000 damage blossoms. Completely off field, which is, yeah, I mean that's, that's crazy. Another thing is like some somebody in the comments might already be asking, well, it's not anywhere near as good as say Jean Ling, for example, right? And it's not. But the thing you have to factor in is Albedo has no uptime issues. He has 100% uptime. Next, we are, have some pretty big adjustments to the A tier, and man, I feel like every time you know we talk about this character, things get a little dicey. But it is our it is our boy Deluc. Sadly, you know, the times have been rough on him. He has not seen any improvements or buffs, but uh, who knows, maybe in the future he'll have, he can benefit a little bit. But for now, we've decided to scoot Diluc down all the way down here to under Ning Guang. And it's not necessarily saying like, oh, he's worse than Ning Guang or really a bit better than uh, Kaching, but it's more reflective of like, you know, Diluc is probably going to be kind of a mid A tier unit, not really a character um, who used to be, you know, with his former glory days. It, just his damage output isn't 
what you'd expect from a uh, main DPS character, in my opinion, nowadays. I want to say uh, about Dilduke. We're not saying that you guys can't run him if you really, really like him. There's nothing like you can run whatever you want. Like you can literally clear the abyss, like this abyss cycle with a physical Lisa if you really, really want to. We're not. We're not saying that we you can't run him. We're just saying that the opportunity and cost of running Deluke is like it's not worth it. And the reason for that is because the damage he's competing in a slot where Bennett and Xiao Ning would normally be as the as the primary carry and both of them offer more than what he can potentially do yes you you can clear if a the best with a a physical lisa if you run like eye perception or alice yeah and, that, and that you, <laughs> yeah, that'll be something to see uh kono I, we'd love to see that so oh i i have a video of it oh there you go well you guys will have to check it out on kono's channel Sadly for me, one of my favorite characters, our adorable Klee is also being demoted. We've decided to move Klee right under Yanfei. And the reason for this is because both Yanfei and Klee are Pyro Catalyst users, but Yanfei has much more accessible constellations. And by constellation 4, Yanfei actually has more utility than most Klee owners have because they don't have constellation 2, Klee. So that means that Yanfei, you can use her as a shield bot and everything like that, as well as the TDOS uh, and Pyro applicator that you may want in your team. As, as a DPS character though, Klee is still like, you know, roughly... Alright, I have nothing to say to that, but I would like to talk about our next unit placement, which is Beto, and we're going to be moving her up under Jean. Well, right, uh, under official. Under official, yeah. Under official, under official. Um, and the reason... The, the reason why that we're moving her up there is Beto is actually a situationally SS tier unit. The The issue with Beto comes that her damage drop off at three targets becomes what it's it, it goes from like 500% maximum outputs uh, on each target to like 300%. And one so, target. So she's basically a unit that you use to stomp one particular uh, matchup. And in the past couple of bits, she's actually been really, really good. Anytime there's like a double Electro Rift Hound. Yeah. She's really, really good into that particular matchup. But on any other types of matchups that don't involve two targets, it's strongly recommended to not use Beto if there's more than three targets. Or if there's only one target. After talking about Beto, she almost feels like she belongs in the special tier, but you know, she's still a little bit more general usage than the characters that are going to go into the special tier, right? But yeah, I mean, <laughs> she's she's close to it. She's close to it with how she plays. We have finished. Uh, oh, okay. We have one more adjustment, and this adjustment is Kono's idea. So why don't you uh, kick this one off? Okay, we're gonna move Kaya to the bottom of A tier. Uh, that's just because his damage is actually pretty high, even if. Sometimes it's it's a bit hard to get off with his icicles due to having to be melee range and his E actually does a lot of damage too. I I I'm gonna take full accountability for this. I think that we did not rate him fairly. I think you could even make the argument for him being low S. What? Okay. <laughs> but I, 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 I don't think so because I think Rosaria is better than him. And Rosaria is probably only a high a tier you know okay that's this those I, are some I, lofty I, claims i don't I, I don't think he's i don't think he's lowest but there could be an argument made for it due to his energy generation next we have oh oh dear this is this is gonna be uh this is gonna be bad uh okay so the first one is another um one of kono's ideas and i'm gonna let her take this one away too i okay okay hear me out guys hear me out guys Lisa's damage is actually, like, on her ultimate, is not actually bad, but the primary reasons that you don't run her is because she's, like, very, very energy greedy. But Raiden, and uh, being a thing, makes Lisa a bit better than she used to be. She's not good. She's, she's, she's still bad. Let me just, let me just point that out. But her utility as a buffer for Eula and Raiden, as well as her not terrible personal damage output, I, I think that makes her at least better than gg <laughs> wow really uh uh really bold claim there better than chi chi oh my gosh 
I know. Don't cancel me on Twitter, please. <laughs> don't, don't start writing it up to Twitter longer. So I'm sorry, guys. Oh my gosh. I think you just. It has to be sad. I think we just lost like a million subscribers saying that. And we have another major promotion. This one is sure to shake the entire meta. I expect all of you to triple crown this character, to um, level 90 her, you know, do everything that you need. We are moving Amber out of the Amber tier and putting her right above Aloy. <laughs> Uh, oh no, what's gonna happen to the amber tier now? Oh, it's 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 empty oh, for yeah, now. No! It it's empty, but it will someone will find a home and it soon enough we'll just have to see who it is. But obviously I was joking. Please do not build your amber unless you know what you're doing. But amber, you know, um, funnily enough, a lot of free to play players now have the elegy for the end. The elegy has been rerun again uh, as lo along with the previous time with the staff of Homa, and amber as a character is a solid elegy applicator for many characters, right? You can double vape with Xing Chou, you can uh, use it to buff Hu Tao. Our elegy being more accessible due to how many times it's been on the banner makes it like, you know, there's a surprising amount of people who on their lower spender or free to play counts do actually have an elegy because they uh, unfortunately lost the 50-50 <laughs> on the <laughs> Yeah, yeah, and, and she's cheap to build. She just needs to have enough hit points to not get one shot, throw the noblesse on her elegy, and you're done, right? So don't overinvest into her. Now we have the final adjustment to the current to the previous tier list. We are moving Xin Yan to the top of SS tier. In her dreams, it's actually into the amber tier. Oh no! The tradition moves on. <laughs> Maybe you should rename the amber tier to the Jin Yan tier. No, I, th I think I think it stays as the amber tier. It, it stays Xin Yan. For tradition's sake, again, so just because a unit is rated bad, that doesn't mean you can't clear all, all the content in the game with it. Yeah, yeah, I, I mean... It just might require more investment yeah. compared to, like, eight other characters. <laughs> cool. Now we're finally getting into the new characters. There have been... Uh, looks like seven new characters here. And we decided to put Toma right above, oh, not there, right above Lisa. Uh, Toma, you know, arguably the second best shielder situationally, but unfortunately not really a great use of your resources. You can apply some pyro for characters like Hu Tao to uh, swirl, but outside of that, his utility is very, very limited. Yeah, l low, low impact character, but you know, if you don't have Zhongli, if you don't have Noel, if you don't have Diona, if you don't have Beidou's Burst, if you don't have Crystallize to rely on, if you don't have Kaya's Constellation, I think four, that adds a shield, if you don't have Yanfei Constellation four, and if you don't have um, Raiden to just face tank everything and Ben's Burst, and if you don't have um, Aito Super Armor, if you don't have uh, Future Character Takito Super Armor, if you don't have uh, the infinite iframes on Kuching, if you don't have the massive range so you don't dodge stuff for Romia, if you don't have the ability to dodge stuff for Child, and if you don't have Yula for Super Armor, you don't have to jump over stuff, <laughs> if you don't have the T2 suck up all the enemies so they can hit you, if you don't have Freeze, they freeze your enemies so they can't attack you, if you don't have Chung to murder everything before they can touch you, then you should build Toma for his shield. I highly recommend it. <laughs> all right, is, is there anything else that you should like that? <laughs> Uh, I like him a lot. He's a he's a very cool guy. That's true. He'll, he'll also do your dishes. All right. Next character, we have Ito. Uh, Kona, why don't you kick this one off? Okay. So we're we're moving Ito into the top the top of S tier, right right under Child. And the reason why he's under Child is because Child is Hydro, and he has one of the best comps in the game, International. Ito has pretty high damage. It's good, yeah. His team comps aren't like terrible. He he has surprising amount of like team flexibility, even considering the fact that he requires a he, he almost requires a secondary geo in the form of either like what Abedo, Goro. Goro. He does have the issue of being geo, so the the ceiling for him is lower than what it could be. Yeah, like free to play childs can easily hit like 300k nukes and stuff like that. Oh, okay, I wouldn't say easily, but they can often hit 300k nukes. Whereas Ito, you know, he's chugging along, but that's the thing is that he's kind of like an unstoppable battering ram. He's got super armor. Every hit he does is fast, impactful, and powerful. And if you pair him up with his geo buddies, you have a very satisfying, very resilient, and very easy to use team, right? You just, uh, like, I feel like Ito's design is on point. He's balanced but 
feels really good and he's actually, you know, very powerful. Even though the A tier is quote unquote the balanced tier, like I feel like for a five star exclusive character or limited character like Ito, being in the S tier is really reflective of where we like to see these types of characters. So yeah, that's kind of my two cents on him. All right, and so for the next character, drum roll please. Goro! And he'll be going in the special tier. So yep. the reason why he's special tier is because he only, he's basically like a Geo Bennett, especially if you factor in constellations, which not many free to play players will have. But um, if, if you do factor in that, he becomes like the equivalent of a Geo Bennett, uh, exclusively for defense Geo characters. AKA Ito, like, Noel, Albedo, just those three. Yeah. Uh, he has the highest amount of damage offered. It's, it's about 50% a damage bonus to all three of those characters, which would put him in SS tier. But because he's literally unusable and completely garbage outside of that, yeah, he's he's going into the special tier. Next character we have is Shen He. Shen He, we're putting her right under Goro, I guess. Now this is kind of difficult to say like who's better. They're both SS tier at what they do. Um, Shen He in particular, once you have the Ayaka Kokomi plus either Venti or Kazuha, preferably Kazuha, then she is literally one of the in the best team in the game, arguably the best team in the game, the Ayaka Freeze team. But with that being said, outside of specifically buffing Ayaka, Shen He's role for buffing Ganyu isn't as impactful. And, you know, outside of Ganyu, then you are left with characters like Rosaria and Kaya, who, while it's a nice buff for them, it's far from, you know, the kind of meta defining traits that she has with Ayaka. Next, we have. Um, so the next character is Yunjin, and we have decided to put her at the bottom of the special tier. Sadly, Yunjin does not quite offer as radical a buffs as these characters above her. And in my opinion, you know, let's say she's kind of with some teammates that do, um, you know, use her well. I would put her somewhere in A tier for that situation. Now, if you have Constellation 6 Yunjin, and if you have a pretty stacked Yomiya, then she can be bumped up significantly, probably somewhere in the S tier for that specific, uh, that one specific use case. However, outside of that, you know, while the buff is nice and she raises kind of the floor for normal attack characters, like for example, Razor or I don't know, the people that, uh, official, Ayato. right? Ayato, right? You know, she can buff those characters, but at the same time, the opportunity cost is big. You have many other characters that just, you know, do a lot more damage that you can choose to run instead, like Xing Cho, you could just, Pair Yomi up with Xing Cho instead of uh, Yun Jin, and you probably end up doing a lot, a lot more damage. She also does require a lot of uh, a surprising amount of investment because she's defense scaling. So she prefers to be level 90, and then you want a lot of ER and yeah. defense percentage subs. So next we have we have Yai Miko. Now Yai Miko is a mixed bag, and we decided to put her at the top of A tier. Now, Yai Miko is a character with many issues. In particular, she has to spend 17 years on the field throwing down all her turrets all the time. But at the same time, you know, the damage she does is reasonable. And most free to plays have the Witsis, so they can get off some pretty solid um, nukes or, you know, Yai Miko's bursts off, which do do a good amount of damage. But again, the field time in, in combination with the fact that, you know, she, she, <laughs> just the field time. Uh, really hurt her viability and kind of lower her tier placement. There is something that I want to point out on why she's rated higher than like Fischl or Beto. It's because her overall ceiling, due to the way that her talents scale, is, is actually higher, especially if you factor in the fact that she also gets like damage bonus off of like her EM, even though not that much. It, it does, it, it can end up making a difference depending on the comp that she's being run in, especially when you pair it with like Electro charge, say if you were to run her with like Sucrose, for example. The Sucrose is a good example. Uh, it does give her an edge over, uh, say like Official or Beta, her overall ceiling, but the fact that she has a very, very long field time means that she's not as good as she could be. Last new character. Uh, we're gonna be putting Ayato in uh, S tier uh, directly above Ito. And the reason for that is because Ayato has uh, 
Uh, he's, a, he's a pretty good character. He's Hydro. He has high base damage, which benefits him a lot. He has consistent rotations. Uh, and even though the, the ceiling for his, like, the damage potential isn't as high as, say, like, a international child teams, his team comp flexibility due to his high damage means that he has a lot of cases, case scenarios where he ends up being, like, very, very strong. Yeah, yeah. He's such a flexible, well-rounded Hydro unit um, with good personal, much higher personal damage, like raw Hydro damage than Child. Great Hydro application, but not as great as Child's, right? Uh, great for Electro Charge teams, but, you know, Electro Charge isn't necessarily the most meta of teams, but it's still good. Um, he's great as an individual main DPS, like Hyper Carry style, but at the same time, just slightly worse than other Hyper Carries, like Raiden and even Xiao, arguably. Um, and finally, he's also good for international, but also just slightly worse for international than Child is. So as as you can see, you know, he's definitely feeling like currently the jack of all trades, Hydro, Hydro DPS character, while at the same time being good or even great at all those roles, not necessarily being the best at those roles. So that's why, you know, Aito is just shy of potentially breaking into the SS tier. You know, he's at the top of the S tier for that reason, just because he's not quite the best at anything, but he's great at everything. And that is, in my opinion, um, you know, I, I think that that means that he was designed very well because of that, uh, because, of, because of all those traits. So, yeah. Ooh, that's it, right? Yeah, that, that's it, that's it. All right, so with the free-to-play portion of this tier list completed, here is my Whale or Leviathan speedrunning tier list. Now, I did kind of speedrun this tier list, but this is just, you know, my best attempt at it for now. I wanted to emphasize that Ayato's placement is extremely tentative and highly speculative, and although I believe he has the potential to set world records, to be conservative, I'm putting him in the speed tier. And again, please check out Kono's Twitch at twitch.tv slash Kono. She has been a great help when it comes to making these tier lists and providing that free-to-play perspective. As always, I appreciate every single one of you. This is I Went to Lose, signing out.